remember and record. Okay, so today we are venturing into the world of full stack development. Basically, we're going to build our first full stack application, including the front end, back end, and database. So, just to give you an idea of the plan for today, um, I'm going to talk about and demonstrate setting up a the basic application that they give us, right? Um, and I'm just gonna follow, I'm gonna cut and paste so you guys don't have to watch me type. And I'm gonna show you what I did in a separate demonstration. I'm gonna show you how I prepared for the exam. Cause I had to take the, as part of preparation for this class, I had to take the exam, I had to take the class, do all the assignments and, and get a black belt. So I'll show you what I did to prepare for the belt exam. Um, the issue with the belt exam, and I, I know I sound like a broken record and I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but I, I want everybody to understand, be on the same page. You have to make a template, okay? Because all of you, everybody in this room or virtual room could pass the test. It's just a matter of what the issue like with the black belt is time. So if you want to get a black belt, and even if, if you want to get a red belt, I mean, it's the issue is you have five hours to do the test and the problem like people like why people can't get a black belt is they just run out of time. So if you have all of your templates and everything set up beforehand, it's just a matter of going through and hitting, you know, auto replace, replacing all of your, you know, placeholders with the variables for the exam. Uh, any questions about that? Okay. Are we going to go over the template or yes. are you talking about the, like the one that you've been uh -huh. Using a new thing? Yeah, okay. yeah. So the template's going to get more complex. And that's why I'm saying um, I'm going to do a demo uh, of what I did and what I had in place. Um, but yeah, let's start with their demo. So if, um, if you haven't done this already, that's fine. But follow along. If you get stuck, we'll fix it after the lecture. But I want you guys to actually get used to doing this. So um, let me just start with my slides and give my little spiel here. So database connections. Basically the overview, the way our app is gonna be changing is we're going to have three primary files that will connect us to a database. Okay, so the old server.py, which we're used to, we're still gonna be using that. The new files are the MySQL connection.py. Okay, so this one is, um, you don't need to understand everything that's going on in this file. Um, we use code all the time that, we don't know how it works, but we use it, right? Python is written in C. I don't know C. Like I can maybe write a guessing game in C, but I don't know the intricacies of the C programming language, but I can use Python without knowing how to use C or how to write programs in C. Same thing with this. There's a bunch of built-in Python code that helps us streamline the database connection process. So you don't need to understand everything, but just if you're getting tripped up by MySQL, connection.py, just cut and paste it every time and forget it because it'll you don't need to change anything in that file. And then finally, we're going to have a file for our models. Okay, so we're going to talk about MVC in the afternoon. This morning, I'm going to talk about hooking up the database. I'm going to spend most of the morning talking about this. We'll talk a little bit about the CRUD, but I'm going to hold off on MVC and modularization at, for after the break or after lunch. Um, but the models are basically our tables. So for every table, you're going to have a model. So if we have a user, we're going to have a user model, a user.py file that's going to handle connecting to our user table. Okay. Questions about this so far? Okay. So the first, I'm going to start with, oh, MySQL Workbench Review. Um, I'll do that when we do the, uh, the demo for the full stack app. So connecting to a database. So MySQL connection.py, this is in your platform. If you go to under database connections, connecting to a database, this is the whole form. I've broken it up into sections just so we can, we're not gonna understand every bit of this. I don't understand every bit of this, but we're gonna look at it and basically get an overview of it. And again, if this is looks daunting, which it probably does, don't worry about it, OK? 
Okay, we're just going to cut and paste. We're going to use this code. We don't necessarily need to know the intricacies of how it works at this point. Okay. Was so that like the boilerplate for HTML? Yes, exactly, exactly. As you go further, this is going to start to make sense. Um, you're going to, you should be able to see, you know, some familiarity, but there's a lot of it that we haven't talked about, and that's okay. Okay, um, but let me go back to my slides, and we'll. So, what do you notice about this file. And this is basically, I've just cut this same file up into pieces. What keywords do you see that you, that you recognize? Class, unfortunately. <laughs> yes, the old class, right? So, um, but before that, you guys- Import. Import, right? So we're importing, um, we're gonna, when we install Flask, we're gonna be importing this uh, library, PyMySQL. And that's what's going to allow us to connect to the database. So we're importing that and we're importing immediately the object cursors on from that module. Cursors is, um, it's basically a Python, I don't know if we say a function, it helps us retrieve database data without holding the rows of data in memory. So it's just sort of makes our access of the database more streamlined and more efficient. Okay, and you'll notice that this cursor is used several times in this file, right? We have cursors, that cursors is right here, down here, we're calling the dict cursor on the cursors object. But basically this is, this is a class, right? So what is our class called? My SQL connection. My SQL connection, right. So if we were to create an instance of My SQL connection, how would we do it? You would make a, uh, you've got to make a name first uh -huh. and then equal that to My SQL connection with parentheses. Parentheses, right. Does it take an argument? No. Oh, well, yeah, it does for a DB. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, so no, that's okay. Yeah, this is, we haven't seen this for a couple of days, so that's fine. We're just reviewing. So when we have a class and we have our dunder init method, right? What does the dunder init do again? Initializes our instances. Yeah, so if we want to give our class attributes, right? We, we declare a dunder init, we always pass self as the first argument. And then any arguments we want to give to our our instance, when we instantiate it, we pass it into the dunder init method. Right? So the only argument this takes is a DB, okay? Now in here, we have a connection that we're declaring a connection variable. We're using the PyMySQL module that we've imported and we're calling the method connect. Oops, I'm dragging it, I don't wanna do that. So what do you see inside of this connect? So the connect, am I gonna have to highlight it? Yeah. Connect is right here. So what are some of the um, variables that are set up in here? Host is equal to local host. Yeah, host is equal to local host. So that's just saying, you know, where our server is going to be running. User is root. So when we set up MySQL on our computers, we set up our user as root. And there was a reason for that, right? So the user root is what is going to be accessing our database. Okay, and the password, when we, I made a big deal about making it root and nothing else, it's the password, we set it in this file. Now, if you're on a Mac, it's going to be root root. Okay, so you'll have to come in and change this to root root. Our DB is just the DB that gets passed in. And the character set is just UTF-8, that's just sort of the standard character set. Um, it allows us to store things like foreign characters and it opens up the number of characters we can store. Um, cursor class, mysql.cursors, dict cur, auto commit equals true, to be perfectly honest. I don't know exactly what this does. Um, I hope you're not curious about it because I can't really, I can look it up if you are curious, but I'm not sure exactly what this does. I think it um, helps to return a dictionary, but I'm not 100%. And then self.connection is equal to connection. Okay, so what is this line doing? It's 
saying it's really itself. It. Yeah. Yeah, we're setting up our attribute connection on our class and we're setting it to this variable that we created, right? So we set this variable, we call a method, right? We're calling a function and we're passing it all of this data. And then after, after this function returns, right? When this function executes and returns, it gets stored in this variable. And all we're doing is setting the attribute on our class to that variable, okay? Questions about that? Hopefully this was just review for everyone. Okay. So the next part of our MySQL connection is this. So this is just a continuation down below. I couldn't get it to fit on one slide, so I, I did it this way. Um, the only thing I want you to notice about this is um, like all the try and cat, accept and catch. These are um, handle errors that we might get from our database. So the try means if we're expecting to get an error that may happen, we're going to do it in a try block. So we run this code in a try block and basically what a try block does is it prevents our co our application from crashing if an error comes up. So if we get an error, we handle it with the accept. Okay, so if the code we run in here throws a error, our program won't crash because it's in this try block. And then if there is an error, the accept block will handle it and print a message to us as to what happened. Okay, and then the finally just says, if there's an error or not, no matter what happens inside here, do this, right? So finally, the finally will run regardless of what happens inside the try except block. Okay, now, what do you notice about this though? What is, what is this indicating? How is this def, like def declares a function, right? How is this function related to our class? It takes in self. Sorry? It takes self. So what does that indicate if it's taking self? It's a method. Um, yeah. What kind of method? Class method. Not a class method. So remember, if it was a class method, it would have the at symbol with, let's say, class method to have the decorator. But if it doesn't have a decorator and it takes self. Instance method. Instance method. Very good. Uh -huh. So this is a method that we can call on our class once we create it. So as soon as we instantiate the MySQL connection class, we can call this method on the instance of that class. Okay, question so far. Okay, last line of this file is probably I, I, I'm just going to speculate as to what this does. So we define a function that's outside of our class, right? So if you, let, let me show you the actual file. So you'll see that this is just a function inside of the class. It's not a met, um, an instance method of the class. It's in the same file. But all this method does is, well, what does this method do? It returns something, returns. right? What is it? Returns, returns your, your um, that's the thing at the very top, your class. Yeah, yeah. So it, all this function does is return an instance of our class. So inside here, we're taking the class that we define up here, MySQL connection. We're passing in a database, right? So we pass in the DB to this function when we call it. And then we're just passing whatever gets passed into this function, whatever parameter gets passed in or the argument that gets passed in gets passed down here and we're creating an instance of our class. Okay. So to use our MySQL connection, we're basically gonna be calling this function. And I think a valid question is, well, why don't we just use the class? Why do we wrap it in a function? And I think it has to do with being able to call the method being able to call query.db on the method. I think it has to instantiate the method before or instantiate the class before we can call that. So I think that's why they wrap it in a function, but not 100% on that. Okay. So questions about this. 
Let me just get a show of hands. Who's following? Nobody's. <laughs> okay, a few people. Okay. Questions? Is there? Cool. Five, six. Awesome. Cool, cool. Whether we can apply, it's another question, though. Well, no. So now, again, I want to. I went through this, and if what I said is like over your head, don't worry about it. We're just all we're going to do is cut, copy this, paste it into our our thing, and be done. Okay. I just, I mean, at some point, you you know should be able to understand this and modify it if you if you so choose. But we can make a whole a whole application with just this code, and we don't need to worry about modifying this in any way. All this does is serve as the glue between our application and our database. Okay. So after that monster file, we have friend.py. So what, what's the first thing we notice? What, what's happening on the first line of this file? Importing your connection class. Yes. So we're saying from MySQL connection, import connect to MySQL. What is connect to MySQL? Go back. It's this right here. Okay, so we're importing this function on the first line of our model file. So friend is a model. It's the only object that's in our database. So we have a friends table. So if we have a friends table, we have to have a friend.py file that connects to it. Okay, so for every table we have, we have to have, not, well, not relational tables, but every real world object we have in our database, we need to have a file single, singular, not plural, dot pi. Okay. So we connect, or I'm sorry, we import MySQL connection or the connect to my MySQL. Then what data type is this, or what data structure is friend? Class. Mm -hmm. It's a class, right? What does it take as an argument? Or what, if we want to instantiate a friend, make an instance of our friend class, how do we, what do we need to pass in? First name, last name, occupation created at, update at. Well, do we pass is all it that the ID that we need? So we, what is, what's the argument? What is, what's the parameter in our init? Self oh. and data. Self and data. <laughs> what data structure is data? Isn't it an array or an object? Yeah, so object in, in JavaScript, in Python, it's called a, a dictionary. Dictionary, right? So data is a dictionary. We're, and then we basically taking that dictionary apart inside of our init class, and we're setting all of our attributes to whatever the key value pairs are in the dictionary. So it'll have an ID. We're gonna basically set self.id to whatever the ID key is in our data dictionary. Same with first name, same with last name, same with occupation, created at, update that. Okay. So Pulling from our database uh, of self. Exactly. Exactly. And particularly the IDs. Yes. So any properties we have on our table, we're going to basically create a class or we're going to create an instance of a class and that will be the different rows in our database table. Okay, so if we have friends are, we have uh, Caesar, Robert and Jeff as our friends, right? In our database, as rows in our database. In our program, we are gonna create an instance of the friend class and Caesar, Robert and Jeff will be instances of our class. Okay, so friend is the database. And if I go back, I'll show you the database they're using. If I can, that's really small. But this is the table in our database. It has an ID, first name, last name, occupation, created at, updated at. That corresponds to the attributes on our class. Okay. Questions? Could you repeat that last? Sure. Part of Absolutely. So we have our database. So the whole point of this is we're connecting our database to our class gap, right? So on our SQL server, right, we've created this ERD diagram called friends. And we set up these parameters or these values or these columns on our database, right? So our we have a table of friends 
it has a column of ID, right, which is our primary key. We have a column of first name, column of last name, column for occupation, and so on, right? So all of those attributes or columns on our database, when we bring it into our Flask application, we're going to do it via the model, okay? So the model is just sort of the representation of the things that are in our database. We have a friend table, right? So a friend is an object in our database. So when we pull an item from a database or a bunch of items, like if we get all of our friends, right? We create a instance of the friend class. All of these attributes on our friend object or our friend class are the columns in our database, right? So you'll notice that self.id, that's gonna to correspond to the ID column in our database. Self.first name is gonna to correspond to the first name column in our database. So every column that exists on the database, we need to set an attribute on our class for the columns. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Okay. So this is the one that's a little bit tricky, right? So we have a class method on our friend class and it's called get all. And it takes an argument of CLS. Now, when we have a class method and we pass it CLS, what does CLS represent? Class, right? Class yeah. itself. The class itself, exactly. So bear with me, I'm gonna, re I'll repeat anything I'm about to say because it gets a little tricky. So query should look familiar. What does query do? What is query? Selection from the table of friends. Yes. Isn't that like the join thing? It's not join. This is just a regular old select everything from friends. Oh, you're you're turning that uh, jQuery syntax into just a text for now. That's not J not jQuery. Don't confuse. I'm sorry, not jQuery. Uh, SQL. SQL. Right there, you go. Yeah. So this is just a SQL statement, right? This is something we could just put into our our database and to get all the friends, right? This would return a table of our friends. So we assign that SQL statement to the variable query, okay? Then what do we do with it after that? Where does this, where do you see this variable again? Apparently we're- Query.db. Yeah. So we're saying connect to my SQL, we're passing it an argument. And then we're calling the query dot query underscore db method on it and we're passing it query. Okay. Uh, so I, can you break down the connect to MySQL? Yeah. First flask, that's gonna be like a key, right? Okay, so first flask is the name of our database. Okay, so if I go back to this, our database is called first flask. They have that's what this, what they have us call it. And in our first Flask database, we have a table called friends, okay? okay? So coming back here, we have our MySQL connection and the MySQL connection class has a instance method called query db, query underscore db. It takes an argument of a query, has to have a query, and optionally takes an argument of, a, of data. Right, so it defaults to none. So if we don't pass anything in, it's not gonna error, right? But it has to take a query. So back over here, we're saying, we're taking the instance of connect to MySQL, which is an instance of our connection class, which we have imported up here. Connect to MySQL is a function that returns an instance of this class, the MySQL connection class, okay? So it returns an instance of this class, and then we call the query underscore DB method on it. So this class, we're creating an instance and we're calling this query underscore DB instance method. And we're passing it the query, which is just our SQL statement. Okay, is everybody with me? I'll say it again if you want me to. That's, or go over it again. Is this something we have to absolutely understand right now? No. Okay. No. No. <laughs> okay. But I'll say it again if you want. I, mean, I foresee I can... some uh, errors in the future when I'm trying to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and I'm going to show you like my way may help a little bit, it, or you know, you could just say this guy's you know full of it. I'm going to use a I'm going to use a platform, but I have a way that, that like I do kind of change the wording a little bit so it's a little easier to see what's going on. Are we um, going to be able to do like a practice thing where we are going to go over it? Yep, that's okay. the next thing I'm going to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so if you if this isn't crystal clear, that's cool. I'm just I want to, but. I want you to understand basically like get a gist of what's happening. If it's not like crystal clear, that's fine. Um, but so we call this, this function returns an instance of the class. We call the query dot underscore DB method on it. This will return the data from the database. Okay, so this will reach out, use the connection to the database in the Python language, right? And results will be, basically a dictionary, right? So because the, this, the friends takes a dictionary, right? It takes a dictionary as an argument. So this will return a dictionary, but in order to use this data, we're going to, the get all class method will create a array of instances of friend. Okay, so result will be the dictionary of the data then we're going to establish a friends list. We're going to loop over the results. So results is going to be a list of dictionaries and we're going to loop over it. And each time through, we're going to append a instance of the class. So we're the CLS is again, the class, right? The class friend. And we're creating instances of the class inside the class. And then we're returning that list. That's a mouthful. Append is push, right? Yes. Yeah. So friends is a list. Results is a list of dictionaries. We're looping over results, right? We're taking however many friends we have in our database table. It's this is list. I'm sorry. Results is going to be a list of those dictionaries. Inside this for loop, we're looping over friends. I'm saying friend in results just because I want to be as clear as possible. Then we're saying, taking our friends list and we're pushing into it the instances of the friend class that we're creating. So we're passing the friend, um, each instance of the list, we're passing it in here, creating a instance of the class. And then we're returning friends, which is the array of our classes. Okay, if this is confusing again, it'll be more clear as we go through eventually I probably after the hundredth time I say it, it will be like, oh, that's what he means. So if it's not clear at this point, it will be. Okay. But questions at this point, any questions about anything I've said so far? Okay. Okay. So the last thing is a good old server.py. So the only difference, right? We're still importing our old import statements. We're saying from Flask, import Flask. We're using our render template. The only difference is this line right here, right? We're importing friend. Okay, so I'm sorry, from friend, we're importing friend. And what is friend? The uh, table or database? Not the table. So, object. Yeah, so it's gonna be this, right? We're importing uh, this class so we can use it in our server.py. So from friend, import friend, just means import this file. Okay. So Did we get a data already? We haven't. I mean, I, I might have some data, some embarrassing data in my file. Well, I was just wondering at this point. At this point, no. At this point, okay. we're just doing the connection. We haven't done any data or anything. Um, this is just the, yeah, just the connection. So once we go through this, and I'll do the demo and it'll hopefully make more sense once you see it actually in practice. But we're, so we're importing friend. We're doing this, this should be familiar, right? We're creating app, we're calling, we're creating an instance of the Flask class, passing it under name, setting up our route. And then here we're calling, we're setting a variable friends. And what is this? What is friend.getall? The instance method of the uh, friends class? Yeah, so you're close, not the instance method, it's the class method. 
right? So remember, we can call we instance methods have to be called on an actual instance of the class or a friend that we've created. Class methods can be called on the class itself. So we're calling get all from we're using taking the friend class and calling the get all class method on it. What this does is goes to our database, right? It submits the SQL query, makes the connection to the database, calls this method, gets all the data, gets the comes back as a result. The results is a list of dictionaries. We iterate over that list, make a instance of the friend class of each of those dictionaries, and then we return the list of objects, the list of our friend objects. Okay. And do, then- do, do, you mind, do you mind going back real quick? I'm sorry. I'm just no, having no, a hard no. time understanding um, yeah. the second to last line where you're, you're appending, mm -hmm. right? So that CLS, so that's the class itself, right? So you're, yes. you're like, you know, friend, and then you're passing in each item in that right. result. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so this, remember, a friend, to create a friend, we need to pass it a data dictionary, which friend is, right? Because results gets a list of dictionaries. We're taking that list of dictionaries right here, iterating over it, and I'm calling the variable of iteration friend, right? So each time this loop runs, friend is a dictionary coming from the results list. I'm just taking that dictionary, using it to create an instance of my friend, and then pushing it into this list, empty list of friends that I've created. And then I return that list. So when I call this method down in my route, right? When I, when I say friends equals friend.getAll, friends is my list of objects. It's my list of friend objects. And now I can use that inside of my templates. I can use it just like I would a, a session object. Um, can you go back up one slide, please? Sure. So you're saying like right here, right? We're going, can you see that? Yeah. Uh, we're going to go back up, we're go, like our array of friends. Did you want me to move? I'm sorry. No, 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 sorry. Okay. Like our array of friends, right? Our friends yeah. that we just created right here. Yeah. Uh, is going to be put into the CLS, but then this is the CLS. Yeah, so the CLS is it'll here, it'll be fed into here. Yes. Right? Yeah. And then uh, create our dictionary. Yes. That's what CLS is doing. And then we're appending. Oh no, no, sorry. And then we're appending that each of those friend objects into our list. Yep. And then we're going to return it for the next slide. Exactly. Okay. That down here, so friends is the invocation of this class method, right? This okay. class method's job is to connect to my database, submit this query, right? This I'm sorry, I have that too much. It submits this query to my database, and if there's friends in my friends table, it's going to return them as a list of dictionaries, right? So when I pass this query to this query DB method, it connects to my database, and then the results will be the list of dictionaries representing all the friends in my table. So it's gonna convert the data that's in my table on, in all my columns to key value pairs in my dictionary. Then I create the object, I'm sorry, the list to hold my friends. And then each time through, CLS is just like if we were saying friend parentheses and saying, you know, ID one, first name, Chuck, last name, Payne, so on, right? It's just creating a friend or, or creating an instance of our friend class. Right. And it's plugging all the data that's inside of our table into our instance of a friend. So it knows when we created our friend, when we updated our friend, it knows what our friend does for a living. Then so each time this, each time this loop runs, this for loop, it's making an instance of the friend class. So imagine this is capital F R I E N D friend. Right. Okay. And we're passing in the dictionary to create an instance of our class. And then it returns the list of dictionaries. I'm sorry, the list of objects. Yeah. List, of list of objects, yeah. Objects. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this. And it'll hopefully make more sense once we've um, built this. So I'm going to bring up Visual Studio Code. Let me make a new file. A new folder called mm. 
flask db these are all your friends right that we just got yeah we're printing it but I mean, they're not my friends they're <laughs> i don't have any friends neither do i <laughs> um, return so we're not your friends i hope so you know what you're right i have made new friends yeah uh, <laughs> Oh, you're not. Are you talking to him? Not talking to me. I, I was talking, talking to both of you. Both okay. We're family now. I'm talking about everybody here. Oh, I, I have I'm friends. feeling a lot of love. I appreciate it. Okay. I had just imported friends from y'all. So, but then like the return right here. Oops, I'm sorry. Am I in your way? No. I'm just trying to like. Okay, you're gonna render index HTML, and then you're gonna show it here. But I guess I'm just like, uh, we're gonna put friends. Yes. But, but okay. then they they don't show it being used at this in this in this. Um, we'll use it. We'll build this out and flesh it out and, and it'll make more sense. Gosh. Okay, so let's build this. I've got my I've got my empty flask. You guys see Visual Studio Code, right? Yes, no? Yeah. There, okay. All right, so review time. How do I make a flask app? Make the- Start a new folder, folder. first of all. Yeah, so I got my new folder. And open an integrated terminal. Got it. And install Flask. Yeah. Like yeah. Python. Yeah. M. Are we doing a practice assignment? Or? Yeah, I'm just going to be follow. So if you guys want to follow along, I'm going to be doing uh, this exact thing. I'm going to use the, the code that's right here. Okay. Where would you Actually, put this in this folder structure that you had us make? Um, under. I think there's a flask DB. Hold on, let me find out. It's going way back. Number yeah, it's, on, it's under uh, flask MySQL DB connection. Yes, you're right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I have it. So that's where we're putting our project in the yeah. DB connections. Yeah. Uh huh. Got it. Thank you. Sure. And thank you. Okay. Uh, so flask db yeah flask my sequel okay so yeah i'm doing the connecting to database exercise so let me back up um i'm going to go to sql workbench because if i forget and i probably will um, want to make sure that i have my database okay so i'm going to come in here and i have a friend do i have it I might not i might have deleted it i have friendships but i don't have friends cool so i'm going to make a new First of all, make a database to actually connect, right? So that's the want first to, thing we do. Yeah, so I'm gonna make the friends, basically I'm gonna mimic this. I'm gonna make a friends, what do they wanna call it? First flask. Yeah, I think, I'm just gonna call it first flask. So I'm gonna come back to MySQL Workbench. I'm gonna call this first flask. So that's the name of my database. Okay, so I called it first flask. And now how do I make that friend table? Add diagram. Yeah, click on add diagram, make a table, double click it, I'll call it friends, plural. Okay, what is the first column on every single table we ever make in our life? ID. It's an int, primary key, can't be null, and we want it to auto increment. Uh, what else does a friend have? First name, last name, occupation. So we have a first name. Last name. Occupation. I'm careful with my spelling, because if I have a misspelling, it could cost me two hours. And then what else does every table have to have? Created at, updated yeah. at. So we have a created at, make sure the spelling's right, at what data type is created at? Uh, data time. Yeah, date time. We want it to timestamp it. We use the now function. And we also want an updated at. date time, and then if we want to ever update our friends, 
which <laughs> is kind of how it works. You want to say now and then on update now. Okay. Let me make this bigger so you guys can see. Let me know if I'm going too fast because I tend to go, or if I'm going too slow. If I'm going too slow, I can't do much about it. But if I'm going too fast, I can help it. It's all right. I'm just going to rewatch it tomorrow okay. or tonight. Okay, cool. Following along right now. All right. So we have our table. It looks pretty much identical. I don't think I made any typos. Looks pretty good. We don't have any relationships. This is just a simple little, you know, just to get us used to it. So now am I done? Do I have my database? Got to afford to engineer it. Right. right. This is the map. We have to make the territory now. So I go to database, forward engineer, <clears throat> just click the defaults. I'm going to say generate drop schema because I did have friends in there somewhere. I want to make sure that it clears it out. I type in my password. Okay. Um, next. Do you do you got to type your password in? So you can store yours in the keychain, and if you did that, I recommend it because it's easier. I don't do it just so I can. So when people are when I'm doing a demo, people can see what to do, but. Yeah, you'd have to type in your password every time if you don't store it in the keychain or what do they call it, the vault, something like that. Okay, so this is the SQL that gets generated from our ERD. So that's, we could save that if we want, we don't have to. Just click next, no green, or I'm sorry, no red is good and click close. I'm gonna go, now I'm gonna go back home and just make sure that my database is there, make sure it's running. So I'm gonna go back here. And I should see, what did I call it? Let me refresh. First flask. flask. First flask, right? There it is. So I got first flask. Double click it. So it's the one being used. And I'm just going to see, I've got my tables, should just be one. I got friends. Okay. And it's empty. So I'm going to put some dummy data in here just because the first, um, the first code we're going to run is a, is a uh, get, right? We're going to basically pull the data from our database. So I'm just going to add some friends in here just so we have some data. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to write the SQL. I'm just going to do it in the form editor. So I'm going to say, uh, Chuck, I hope you'll be my friend. And occupation is coder. And then the ID created at updated app should auto-populate. So now if I come down here and I click apply, it gives me the SQL that I needed, that it's going to run or that I should could have run if I wanted to do this the old fashioned way. Why don't we learn? All right, how did, how did you get to the um, form editor? Okay, so on the right, there's... Okay. Yeah, so click on form editor and it should come uh -huh. up. And then once you filled in the form, you go down to the bottom here, it says apply. And just click apply and it'll give you the, the uh, SQL that it's gonna run to generate this. So if you ever forget, you can just kind of use that as a cheat. So it gives me insert into, and it says the name of the database, first flask.friends, the, the column names, and then the values, Chuck Payne coder. Okay, then I click apply, it executed, I finish. Now, if I run this code, if I select everything from this table, there's Chuck. Okay, I'm gonna add a couple more just for, uh, yeah, do this. So. Do you have to erase it or can you do like a comma or something in the first name? I'm not sure if you can add multiple. And I, we can try it, if you guys can try it, I don't wanna like waste your time if it doesn't work. So but Eric is gonna be my other friend. Should Eric still stay at I think ID it works. One? Now, oh, so yeah, the ID, I'd have to erase this. I'm going to erase this and hopefully it'll work. I, I don't usually do it this way. So um, Eric, I'm going to give you a different occupation. You're going to be a data scientist. Okay, let me see if I apply. It gives me the SQL. Apply. Oops. What I do? Okay, let me go back. 
canceled. Something went wrong. You took out the ID, but yeah, I'm expecting to... it to auto increment. Oh. Right. You know what? I'm gonna do this the old-fashioned way. Let's. I'm gonna copy the SQL. I'm just gonna close this. Come in here. Yeah, I'm just gonna make a new. Okay, so now I have. I'm gonna run this. Oh, that's why. Application. It's updating. That's why it's not working. Okay. Uh, how did you get to the uh, local instance? The local, what do you mean? Like where you're at now, you have local instance MySQL 80. Oh, I clicked on, I clicked right here. This is just creates a new SQL, um, a new SQL uh, text file for us. So that you can click on as many of these as you want. It'll create a new file and you can just write your SQL in there. Okay. So is so is Eric ID two? Eric didn't work. So let I'm gonna write Eric. Um, let me see if I can do it this way. If I need to go back. I got it to work. Did you? you? I put in multiple. That's the old one. How you do that with the commas? Yeah, let me make sure. Actually, let me run it real quick. Oh, uh, no, it, it all does it on one ID, though. Yeah. Damn. So let me just do it here. Make this bigger. So we've got first flask. Even if I reclick this and try this way. Friends. So now it gives me Chuck. Let me see if it gives me a new format of the. Now it's just giving me the old one. Okay, so how do we insert friends? Apply. Well, I got it to work. I think like when you're doing your form editor. Um, yeah. You do the form editor. Yeah. Go to form editor and uh -huh. then like click the next. Not click the next arrow. The play button. Oh. So then now you can do a ID thank two. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So remember that for next time. Thank you so much. So Eric Molina, occupation is going to be data scientist. Sounds a little, not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know, man. You never know. Hey, man. All right, I'm going to apply. Please work. Looks like we're good. Run this code again. Good deal. Okay. Nice. I'm just going to go with these two because this take, took way longer than I thought. So now I have Chuck and Eric in here. So I'm going to go back to my application. Can you, right can one. You do that again? I'm sorry. Can you please do that again? I kind of just missed what sure. you did. Yeah. To um, this part. Yeah. Um, when you input the data, it's the next arrow. And yes. So if I and I didn't know this. Whoever who, who found this. Tim. Tim, thank you, Tim. So yeah, so if you try to do just, you can click the next and it'll, re, it'll go through the ones that are already in there. And then you just click the next and it'll give you a blank, a blank form. Oh, and then apply from. Yeah, so then you just, you can type in a name since I'm back here, I'll just do it. So I'm gonna say, Jin, um, I don't know. Our, last name. Is it rent okay? I don't wanna. Yeah, rent, rent's still fine. Okay, um, and then you are a, UI designer. Sounds fancy, right? Now, so when I add, when I add somebody, I just click apply. Whoops, stop. Click record. Damn it. So I would click apply if and it would apply it. So sorry, Jen, you didn't make it into the database. Okay. But did, did would that help? Did you get it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now go back to our Flask application and Okay, so I haven't done anything yet. So what, how do I, we said I need to do pip env install. Now we're doing flask and pi mysql, okay? Yeah, and env. I'm sorry? 
Thank you. That won't work. Pip Ian, oops, let me start over. Pip env install, and we're going to install Flask, and we're going to install Pi My SQL. Okay. I think on the platform they capitalize it. It doesn't matter. I just leave it lowercase. It's easier to type. Okay. Is everybody good? Oops. Let me pull that back up. So it's pip env install flask and pi mysql. So if we run into any errors as you're following along, we'll troubleshoot it after because this is going kind of long. Okay, everybody good? I'm gonna run this and it looks like everything's working okay. I should see my uh, pip file show up. I should see my, there it is. I should see my pip lock, or pip file lock. It's been so long, I can't remember. So everything's installing. It should just take a few seconds. So there's my pip file lock. So if you look in here under packages, it should show Flask and PyMySQL. Okay. What's the next thing I need to do? Shell. Yes. Thank you. Pip env shell. That creates my or establishes or starts my virtual environment. I'm going to run pip list just to make sure everything's good. And I see Jinja, I see Flask, I see PyMySQL, so I'm looks like I'm in business. Now, what do we do? What's after this? Yep, create your template. We can do the template. I'm going to start at the beginning. I'm going to start with server.py. So I'm just going to say new file, server.py. And I'm just going to take it from the, from the website. Close this. And server.py is the last thing they talk about. So I'm just going to copy this. I find that when I copy it, it puts in these weird spaces. So I just highlight it and copy. Close this. Oh, yeah, I want to save. Uh, back to demo. So I'm going to paste that in here. I'm gonna take the comments out just so we can see better what's going on. So I'm importing from friends. I've got my app, I've got my route, and I've got my if under named under main, everything looks good. So what's what should I do next? I put okay to open that uh, server in your yeah, so now I, I know it's gonna I know it's gonna crash because I don't have friends imported and I don't have a template. So um, if I tried to run it, I know I, mean, I could try it, but it's gonna crash. Oh, I see. You need your friends yeah. in the same folder. And server.py. Yeah, it's gonna crash. So it says no module name friends. So I could go down the line, but I'm just gonna stay with what's familiar for right now. I'm gonna make a template for our index.html. So how do I do that? You create a um, new folder. A new folder has to be called templates, right? Yeah, it has to be plural. Yeah, it has to be plural. And then in, inside this, I'm going to make a new file called index.html. And just use the boilerplate code. I'm going to call it index so I know where I'm going. Put in a flag just so I know I'm getting to the right place. Cool. All right, so now this still won't work because I don't have the friend. So where where does this come from? What is this friend, import friend, from friend, import friend? No SQL. Yes. So I'm going to go back to and just steal it from here. So it's friend.py. So I'm going to copy all this stuff, come back to my application. I'm going to make the file to hold it. So I'm going to say new file and it's friend spell it right, f-r-i-e-n-d.py. I'm gonna paste this in here, save it. Now, if I come in here, so that went away. That Sometimes I get this no matter what, this underscore, this warning, um, I think it's just a common thing. So now I'm thinking it should start. So I'm gonna give it a try. 
Nope. No module name MySQL connection. So this is the one where we have to just, right? This is the glue between our application and our database. So I'm going to highlight this, copy it. And I know it's a long file name, but just name it this. So my SQL connection.py. I think that's right, did I hear right? Yeah. And paste that in here, save it. So now I should be good, right? So I'm gonna start up, server starts. It's a good sign. I'm gonna open up a new tab and it's localhost 5000. There it is. Okay, so this is a review or to kind of give an explanation as to what's happening. Let me close this up. First thing is my server.py, right? So if something didn't work, like if I got it not found, I would come in here. So my when I visit index.html, or I'm sorry, when I visit localhost 5000, what happens? Making a get request? Yeah, making a get request. So, and I have a route for that get request. I, I have a route handling the traffic to my route. So when I visit that route, we have the app decorator, which automatically invokes this def index or the index function. So I have friends. I'm saying friend.get all. Where does this come from? The class map. I think I got to write this on. Yeah. So I've got my friend class, right? Why isn't it scrolling? Oh, I've got my friend class. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've got a get all class method on that friend. So this right here is calling this class method. You have that, that friend.py in the same level as like your server pi, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And that will change today. We're going to be modularizing our application, but for now it's cool. For now, this is fine. So it's reaching out, it's grabbing from friend, import friend, right? So it's asking for this file, importing the friend class. I'm calling the get all method on it or the get all class method. I don't need to pass it anything. All it takes is the class as an argument. So this is where the sort of magic happens, right? I make the query statement. I pass that query to my connect file, which is here. And we're not a row, but that's right there, right? So we start at the server. The server asks or uses the friend model to query my database. It calls this get all class method. This get all method then calls or creates an instance of my SQL connection. I pass it the name of my database and I pass it the query that I create, create right here. Then that calls this query DB method. I pass it the query, right? Which is just the SQL statement. It goes through the try catch block. It makes the request. It looks for keywords and all that stuff. And if it works, if everything goes okay, then it will return the list of dictionaries and it will close the connection. And if I go back to server.py, you can see that I make the request and then I print whatever's returned from the database. So if I open up my terminal, there's my return from my database right there. So it's a, it's a list of friend objects, which is what happens on this line in the friend.py file. So I go through, my result is a list of dictionaries I iterate through that list of dictionaries and create an instance of the friend class for each one of those. Any questions so far? Yes, I done copy and pasted everything you did, but I can't get to my local host. Okay, well, um, okay, we'll we'll troubleshoot. I'm gonna just take a few more minutes. I just want to show you a few more things, and we'll end for the morning. Um, 
Okay, so the one thing, the other thing I want to show you is now that we have it, we can, we have our friends, we can now pass this to our index.html. So I can just say friends. Oops, all right. Friends equals friends. So now I have this list of friends objects available to me in my view, in my index.html. So if I go back to index.html and I'm going to put it right here, I'm just going to say, use the Jinja syntax and see what friends looks like. I'm having trouble spelling friends today. There we go. So now if I go back to my browser, refresh, I have my list of friends. Okay. So the friend objects are just like what we're normally used to, right? So I can use Jinja, I can iterate over them. I can say, um, I'm gonna do this down here. I'm gonna say uh, J4 and I'm gonna say for friend in friends. And I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna start just by printing out the friend, oops. Okay, so if I go back here, refresh, I get each, indi in each individual friend printing out. Now the friends are just instances of my friend object, right? So they have these properties like first name, last name, all that stuff. So I can say in my HTML, I can say I want to print friend.first name. I'm sorry, down here. Friend.first name. Now, if I go back to my view, I get Chuck and Eric. Okay, questions? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop there and we'll troubleshoot uh, everybody's issues. I want to. God, I didn't get as far as I wanted. So read through the CRUD. Um, for these, I know they're practice, but you kind of have to do them. Um, you're not going to be able to do this one until the afternoon. So for the morning, um, just work on getting the user's CR to work. Um, then in the afternoon, we'll talk. A, you know what? I'm going to talk a little bit about SQL injection right now. Is it OK if I go a little bit over? Um, no, <laughs> I got that. Um, is like, no, shut up. I want to get my no, hand. I just I accidentally ordered a sandwich for pickup instead of delivery, so I'm like, shit, I gotta go get it. <laughs> I don't want to stand between Jesse and a sandwich, so big sandwich guy. Here.